right okay this is the anatomical position of the bony pelvis and for the easiness of study i am going to tilt it more forward to show you urogenital diaphragm this is the model of urogenital diaphragm having seven layers it is uh, urogenital diaphragm it is attached somewhere here between the two ischiopubic ramus angle between the two ischiopubic ramus and for the uh, it is actually situated like this but for the easiness of study let me tilt it forward tilt it upward sorry and when we see the first layer it is of skin and the first layer of the skin in case of female it having a vestibule or in case of a male there is a median raphe when we remove the layer of the skin we can find the fatty layer of the superficial fascia which is actually continuation of the fatty layer of the camphor of the superficial fascia of the anterior abdominal wall when we remove this layer we can find the third layer and this third layer that is the fascia of the coolis and this fascia of the coolis it is actually the deep membranous layer of the anterior abdominal wall which is going to continue as the deep fascia of the penis and that deep fascia of the penis it is continuous with the dartos muscle of the scrotum and at the perineum this layer of the dartos muscle it is going to continue as fascia of the coolis so fascia of the coolis is nothing but it is the deep membranous layer of the superficial fascia and in the perineum it is called as coolis fascia and it is going to form the lower boundary of the superficial perineal pouch so uh, the third layer is the coolis fascia coolis fascia on the posterior side it is attached with the perineal membrane we are going to see it later on and anteriorly it is going to communicate or connected with the uh, dartos muscle the fascia of the penis and anterior abdominal wall through uh, scarpa's fascia when we remove the coolis fascia we can find the content of the superficial perineal pouch superficial perineal pouch contain mainly having the three muscles and these three muscles in case of the male uh, the two crush of the penis they are attached with the ischiopubic ramus while in case of the female the two crush of the clitoris it is going to attach with the ischiopubic ramus and this crush on the both the side they are covered by one muscle and this muscle on one on each side it is called as a ischiocavernosus muscle in case of the male Uh, there is a bipinnate muscle which is present within the midline which is going to cover the bulb of the penis while in case of the female this muscle it is going to separated by one gap and that is the vestibule of the uh, female uh, and that is called as a bulbo spongiosus muscle so this muscle is the bulbo spongiosus muscle and on the posterior side of the urogenital diaphragm there is one transversely situated muscle one on each side and these muscles are called as the superficial transverse perineal muscle so there are three muscles in the superficial perineal pouch two bulbo spongiosus uh, sorry ischiocavernosus bulbo spongiosus and transverse perineal superficial transverse perineal muscles one on each side when we see the superficial perineal pouch up upper layer that is formed by the perineal membrane and this perineal membrane it is the very important membrane so let me remove this superficial the content of the superficial perineal pouch to see the uh, roof of or we can say the upper superior layer of the uh, superficial perineal pouch and this is formed by the perineal membrane which is posteriorly connected with this coolis fascia and anteriorly it is open so superficial perineal pouch it is open anteriorly while closed posteriorly this perineal membrane it is a fibrous membrane it is triangular in shape where the apex is situated near the subcubic angle and there is a transverse perineal ligament this this is a transverse perineal ligament this is a pe transverse perineal ligament which is formed by the anterior margin of the perineal membrane and this area it is uh, formed by or it is bridged by the arcuate ligament transverse arcuate ligament the gap between these two ligament will provide passage of the dorsal vein of penis on in the center part 
and the dorsal nerve of penis on the both the sides dorsal artery of penis it is not going to pass through this gap but it is going to pierce the perineal membrane just posterior to it but in case of female these are named as dorsal nerve of clitoris while these are called as a d uh, these are called as a dorsal arteries of the clitoris now perineal membrane it is pierced by these two structures first and most important is the urethra in both male and female while in case of the female additionally vagina is also going to pierce the perineal membrane which is just behind the urethra other structures which are going to pierce the perineal membrane they are uh, dorsal artery of the clitoris or penis dorsal uh, just behind the dorsal artery of the clitoris on the lateral aspect of the perineal membrane these two are the deep arteries of the penis or clitoris and just near the vestibule there are two arteries of the vestibule in case of female and the artery to the bulb of the penis in case of the male in case of the male additionally there are two ducts are also the opening of the two ducts are also there just near the artery of the duct of, uh, artery of the bulb of the penis and these are the uh, ducts for the bulbo urethral gland but in case of the female why they are going to pierce this perineal membrane because this in case of male this bulbo urethral glands they are present in the deep perineal pouch which is just above the perineal membrane it is somewhat here while in case of a female the corresponding glands they are called as the uh, greater vestibular glands they are the content of the superficial perineal pouch they are present within the superficial perineal pouch so they are their ducts they are not going to pierce the perineal membrane while in case of male the uh, the corresponding duct glands they are called as a uh, bulbo urethral gland they are present in the deep perineal pouch and they has to reach up to the superficial perineal pouch so their duct has to pierce the perineal membrane on the posterior side there are four structures are piercing the perineal membrane on the both the side there should be the nerve and these nerves they are the posterior scrotal nerve or the posterior labial nerve in case of male and female respectively just medial to the just medial to the lateral most structure there is one artery and that is the posterior scrotal artery or posterior labial artery which is a branch of posterior labial artery it is a branch of the internal pudendal artery the branch of the perineal artery and just next to it there is a vein posterior scrotal or the posterior labial vein is there now when we reflect the perineal membrane when we reflect the perineal membrane it is we can enter into the deep perineal pouch so this perineal membrane is the important membrane which lies between the superficial perineal pouch below and the deep perineal pouch above so let me remove this structure from the bony pelvis and try to see try to make you understand so this is the fascia cullis before that we remove the two layers skin and the superficial fatty layer of the superficial fascia then this is the fascia cullis and in between the fascia cullis and perineal membrane both are connected posteriorly with each other both are attached with posteriorly with each other and in between the two there is a superficial perineal pouch and superficial perineal pouch having this much uh, bulbo spongiosus uh, sorry bulbo spongiosus in the midline ischio cavernosus on the lateral side and on the posterior side there are tra superficial transverse perine muscles when we remove the superficial perineal pouch we can found the perineal membrane and above the perineal membrane there is a content of the deep perineal pouch deep perineal pouch along with the perineal membrane and the superior layer of the uh, superior fascia above the deep perineal pouch these three are collectively called as urogenital diaphragm so these three are collectively called as urogenital diaphragm here let me uh, make one thing clear that this perineal membrane on the posterior side it is going to pierce uh, uh, we can say it is going to split into two part and one part is going to continuous with this lower part it is going to continuous with this fascia of the cullis while the upper part it is going to continue with the superior layer of the urogenital diaphragm okay and anteriorly this perineal membrane it is going to continue with the perineal 
superior layer of the urogenital diaphragm so deep perineal pouch it is close anteriorly also as well as close posteriorly also and in between these two layers the content of the deep perineal pouch is there now let me talk about the content of the deep perineal pouch the content of the deep perineal pouch mainly there are two muscles one is the muscle which is going to encircle the urethral opening and that is called as a sphincter urethral muscle and one muscle that is situated on the posterior side uh, that is called as a deeply situated perineal muscle that's why it is a deep transverse perineal muscle in case of the female it is going to be pierced by the two structures urethra and the vagina while in case of the male it is going to be pierced by only urethra uh, arteries which are going to pierce the perineal membrane uh, and the nerves they are also going to pierce the perineal membrane they are actually situated within the deep perineal pouch and their branches they are going to pierce the perineal membrane and lastly this is a super uh, superior layer of the urogenital diaphragm it is uh, posteriorly attached with the upper band of the uh, perineal membrane and anteriorly also it is connected with the perineal membrane so this is all about the urogenital diaphragm for the quick revision uh, we have seven layers from anterior to posterior side and these seven layers in the sequence we can say the first and most important is the skin of the perineal membrane when we remove the skin we can find the fatty layer of the superficial fascia when we remove the fatty layer of the superficial fascia we can find the fascia of the coolies which is actually the lower limit of the superficial perineal pouch when we remove it it is attached posteriorly with the perineal membrane when we remove it we can enter into the superficial perineal pouch when we remove the content of the superficial perineal pouch we can see the perineal membrane and this perineal membrane is important that it is going to form the lower boundary of the uh, we can say upper boundary of the superficial perineal pouch and the lower boundary of deep perineal pouch when we remove the perin uh, perineal membrane we can see the deep perineal uh, pouch and deep perineal pouch mainly having a two content uh, sphincter urethral as well as the deep transverse perineal and yes in case of male there is additional content of the gland uh, there that is the bulbo urethral gland and their ducts they are going to pierce the perineal membrane but in case of the female the corresponding gland greater vestibular glands they are present already in the superficial perineal pouch so they are not going to pierce the perineal membrane and lastly the superior layer of the urogenital diaphragm thank you